Hello and welcome to Access, my name's Nathan and this is a video about The Last of Us Part 2. If you want to have a broader overview of the game itself and my personal response to it, I put together a video last week that you should check out. It's spoiler free. And aside from some location and character info, so is this video. In a series known for its attention to detail, made by Naughty Dog, a studio known for an extraordinarily high level of craft, we wanted to highlight some of the crazy touches in The Last of Us Part 2 that really stood out. This is a mix of fun references and moments of I can't believe they went to so much trouble, something which you really don't get a sense of until you play the game and see how big and long it is, which really makes the consistent flow of these granular particulars quite remarkable. Okay, in no particular order, number one, in Ellie's bedroom right at the start of the game there's a PS3, a copy of Jack and Daxter and a pair of DualShock 3 controllers. These direct references to Naughty Dog's own back catalogue were also common in the original Last of Us and a little later on here you can find another PS3 with a copy of Uncharted 2. In the apocalypse, this is where I would live. Number two, still in Ellie's room, another reference but this time a much sadder one and to the original Last of Us. In a corner of Ellie's room, on a shelf, is this robot toy, the one that Ellie kindly took for Sam, the young boy she befriended but who didn't survive. After Ellie misses the opportunity to put the toy on Sam's grave, she wonders, what am I going to do with it? Well, now we know. Number three, our first in-depth detail. One thing you might notice if you spend as much time as we did looking around is that the digital clock in Ellie's bedroom moves forward in real time like that. Number four, one last set of things in Ellie's room which combine to give us an insight into her character are all the space related objects she has. The model of an astronaut, a stack of books about planets and astronomy and a pin badge of a rocket on her backpack. It makes a sad kind of sense that Ellie, who's only known the world post-infection, would dream about the things humankind was once able to do. Number five, once you leave Ellie's room and take a walk through the settlement in Jackson, one of the people in the early morning crowd sits on a porch and plays the banjo. Look more closely and this is Gustavo Santuolaja, the composer of the game's famous score. A variation on which he plays here on a banjo that looks a lot like the one he played in person at E3 in 2018. Number six, speaking of instruments, at several points in the game you'll be able to play a guitar. Not content with press X to do guitar, Naughty Dog has crafted a more analog approach to these sections which include strumming animations responsive to the precise way you touch the DualShock's touchpad and chords which are accurately played on the fretboard by your character in game. Number seven is an X-rated reference found by Ellie and Dina on their patrol early in the game, where they happen across a stash of grown-up videotapes. In the best tradition of the grown-up videotape industry, these films have names that parody well-known titles. Dong of the Wolf. Smash Brandy's Cooch. One of these is a play on Naughty Dog's own Crash Bandicoot and the other to Dawn of the Wolf, the fictional film from the first Last of Us which Sarah has a poster of on her wall. Hello. Number eight, sticking with Patrol and one of the touches that stuck with me was how when Ellie and Dina's horses jump over snow covered logs, they knock very precise gaps in the frozen banks like this. Immensely satisfying. Number nine, and on a similar theme, when Ellie and Dina take refuge from a storm in a disused library, there's an absolutely unnecessary accuracy to the physical reaction of the piles of books on the counter, such that if you bound over it and disturb them like this, it sends them flying individually in different directions. Number 10, a touching reference found in the library with a bit of a backstory. As Ellie and Dina walk through the children's section, on the shelf by the door, Ellie spots a giraffe toy, the same kind that Sarah had in her bedroom in the first game. In that game, Joel also happened across a young girl in the quarantine zone with this toy, all foreshadowing the celebrated, extraordinary moment where Ellie and Joel see a herd of giraffes in the wild. Actually, it's called the Tower of Giraffes. Oh, I've ruined it, haven't I? I've ruined it. Number 11, and the last one from this early patrol section of the game, there are also some surprisingly in-depth physics going on with this set of swings in an abandoned front yard. 
I had visions of a tangled mess of horse and chain, but actually what happens is realistically modelled swinging and momentum, and if you hit them with enough force, the swing wrapping around the frame at the top, like when bullies spoil everything in the park. Number 12 has to do with the calendars that you'll find occasionally on your way through the game. Outbreak Day, the day the end of the world started, was the 26th of September 2013, and accordingly most of the calendars in abandoned homes and offices are still set to this month. But some, like the one in this more remote radio tower, have flipped over to October, a sign that the effects of the outbreak took a while to spread perhaps, and that the momentum of normal life was maintained for a little longer, especially in more isolated areas. Number 13, and we're moving away from Jackson and into the Seattle area now. In a bank in the downtown area, searching thoroughly through the security boxes will reward you with another Naughty Dog reference. Cool. This ring with a Latin inscription, which of course once belonged to Nathan Drake in the Uncharted series. Okay, number 14 is one you'll need to listen to instead of watch. As you're making your way into Seattle, Ellie drops inside a small concrete tower, and when I first played this, I was struck by the unexpectedly accurate reverberation of the sound of her landing. It's so specific to being inside that tiny space, made of that specific material, and it's the only place in the game I noticed it being used. Number 15, at one point in the game, Abby wakes up and we can see she's been reading a book. While there are lots of books placed in various locations around the game, this one is unique. Look closely and it's City of Thieves, the historical thriller written by Game of Thrones co-showrunner David Benioff, cited by Bruce Straley and Neil Druckmann as a big influence on the original Last of Us. As a bonus detail, the young character of Lev Benioff in The Last of Us Part 2 shares his name with the protagonist of Benioff's book, Lev, and Benioff himself. Number 16, speaking of Neil Druckmann, who returns as the director of The Last of Us Part 2, throughout the game, Ellie collects a set of comic book trading cards, and one of these features a character called Dr. Uckman. D.R. Uckman. An evil genius affiliated, according to his card, with the New Dogs. We'd like to argue with him having 100 brains, but, well, the game is pretty good. Actually, there are quite a few references to comic books and nerd culture, this is Seattle after all, and a couple I liked in particular are number 17, this board game section of a comic book shop, which has a game of space marine-like miniatures arranged in a diorama. Yes, I said diorama. One of so many scenes of things abandoned halfway through that help us to picture the abruptness of society's collapse. And similarly, number 18, this tabletop RPG set up in an apartment that Ellie can pass through, which I wasn't going to include until I realised you can see the character names stuck to the Games Master's screen, which is just perfect. And also, they've got big wooden tankards, the lovable nerds. Number 19, still on games, at one point you come across this wooden train set, which I know from years in the wooden train set construction business is very accurately modelled. And in fact, to test this, I actually built it. See? And another game reference for number 20, while a lot of the games and films you can see in-game are inspired by genres rather than specific titles, with the arcade game Tetsu Mashu Tournament, the influence of Tekken is clear enough. It's literally Iron Fists or Tetsu Ken, with the Ken replaced by a reference to button mashing, so it's included here. Number 21 is a harder one to show without delving into spoilers, so I've kept it to one example, but there are loads throughout the game, and that is tiny, bespoke reactions to situations, companion characters and the environment, like this one of Ellie, who has a homemade tattoo on her arm, remember, finding a parlour in Seattle. Huh. An actual tattoo shop. The Last of Us Part 2 is a long game, and these reactions make the whole thing feel so carefully polished and curated, and like moments of characterization, are not limited to in-game cinematics. Number 22, just a little after this, in Hillcrest, Ellie obtains a bow, which is great for shooting people in the face. There's some lovely storytelling about this neighbourhood, and the person who owns the bow, which you can discover by searching for a series of interconnected notes. But what I wanted to highlight here is that the owner of the bow, who became infected while wearing it, ready to fight, has now grown around it as the infection has developed, to the extent that Ellie has to wrench it clear of his fungal body. 
Number 23. Safes can be found in various places throughout your journey, accompanied by puzzles in the surrounding area which help you to figure out the combination needed to open them. What I love is the accuracy and detail of how the locks work. The mechanical dials have a momentum to them that actually makes it easier sometimes to focus on the animation rather than the on-screen text when inputting numbers. And just like a real safe, if you get a number wrong and start rotating the dial in the opposite direction, you can't just redo it, you have to start all over again. Number 24, one glimpsed in an early gameplay reveal. At one point in the game, Ellie is stealthing her way into a hospital and encounters this WLF member totally distracted by her PlayStation Vita. And fair enough, as the music gives away, she's playing Hotline Miami. You can zoom in on the screen to be sure, which I think we all knew was dangerously compelling, just maybe not this dangerous. There are a million things I love about the game's portrayal of Seattle, but number 25 is maybe my favourite. Thanks to its unique history, there's an area of around 20 blocks in the Pioneer Square area of the city where the streets were raised several metres above their original ground level after the Great Seattle Fire of 1889. The network of basements, alleys and tunnels created when this happened is called the Seattle Underground. And there are moments in The Last of Us Part 2 where the erosion of the city reveals the original street level. Number 26, and I lied, because we are coming full circle and returning to Ellie's bedroom to point out this snow globe on a shelf above her bed, which features a tiny forest scene with a deer, a reference to Ellie's coming of age challenge the first time she became playable in the original game. Okay, number 27, and a cheeky one to end on. At one point in the game you'll find yourself at the intersection of Parker and Logan. What to read into these superhero names associated with Wolverine and Spider-Man? Perhaps nothing. Or perhaps sly references to Logan, the bleak X-Men movie that drew several comparisons with The Last of Us' style and story, and to current Spider-Man actor Tom Holland, who at this moment is still attached to play Nathan Drake in the proposed Uncharted film adaptation. And that's our enormously incomplete but still hopefully fun look at 27 incredible details we could barely believe in The Last of Us Part 2. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it, let us know about the details in the game that blew your mind in the comments and subscribe to Access for more videos like this. PlayStation.